Hello, look mom no computer here and today we're gonna blow the dust off this box and see what's inside. Oh, 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 oh. Hey! Oh, I hope it still works. Well, this is the Juno 106 and we're gonna do a reverse teardown on it. Just like we did with the Lindrum and the Korg MS-10. This is the third one in this series and it's this beautiful machine. Straight from 1984 and I used this one on tour. I'm gonna completely take it apart and we're gonna have a little look. Done! That was a lot of wires. I had so many that I had to actually write numbers of where they were all going because I think I got up to 25 different ribbon cables. Like I've written all of the numbers, like look down there, 22, 23, 24 and 25. But yeah, anyway, this is the Juno 106 in pieces. As you can see, there is quite a lot going on. It's a little bit more complex than the MS-10, which had one single board. This has got a number of them, and we're gonna go through them. So let's start at the back. What have we actually got here? Well, this is actually a piece of plywood, which is the bottom ah, of the Juno, and it's got the keyboard on top of it. I haven't taken it off, but it's fine. You know what a keybed is. Over here, we've got the power supply. Looking lovely. Look at all that stuff. There's a nice heat sink for the regulators. There's the uh, transformer. Ooh, big capacitors. Lovely jubbly. And Roland. So that's the base. And then we go over to these things. The side panels. Look at that. They're like weird and plasticky. Like on the older ones, the Juno 6 and the Juno 60, I think the side panels were wood. I can't remember. And then for some reason in 1984, they were like, you know what? Let's take, make them really crappy plastic. Why not? Somehow in the 80s, everything started just going downhill and they opted for this stuff. But I quite like it. I quite like the whole oversized plastic nature of the beast. And then we got this, which is actually, ooh, look at that, beautiful. This is the like expression assembly that goes next to the keyboard down here. What we got here is one potentiometer that is springed for the bender. If you look underneath in here, you can actually see the, the actual uh, potentiometer moving and it's got a switch above it because you can actually push this one to make it do things. And then there's another circuit board with some other potentiometers and a little switch for the portamento. It's pretty lovely, nice little compact thing. And the plastic in these things are so thick. It's like built like a brick. It's amazing. Now we're on to the next little bit. Well, it's actually quite a big bit. It's probably the main thing you see when you're playing on Juno. And that is the control panel. This beautiful big thing, look at that. I guess it's uh, steel. It's been all folded. It's got different parts of folds and like, actually um, a multi-layer set of um, metal sheets. So they're doing some different funky things. It's pretty funky. I have a feeling this hasn't actually been opened much. I mean, it has been repaired and I'll show you the repair later, but it looks like it hasn't actually been tended too much since it's been, you know, come off the factory line, potentially in 1984. I've still got the stickers on from my uh, gig, you know, MIDI, Channel 15. Uh, this is all the different songs of where I need to transpose the keyboard to because I only know how to play on the white keys. When you start involving all of these like semitones, I get a little confused. And then we get over to the actual synthesizer, which is here. So we go over to this one first. So this is the brains behind the beast. It's called Juno 106 CPU board. It's the CPU, it tells everything else what to do basically. You can get replacements of this whole board and it's called the Kiwi mod and it basically makes the Juno a lot more functional. So you just pull it out, pop the Kiwi mod in and it tells it to do loads of different things. There's loads of different shortcuts. You're actually able to add another set of envelope generators. It's quite crazy, but I've got the standard one here. It's got a battery here so it doesn't forget any of the presets. And this is where all of the ribbon cables are going. As you can see, I've numbered all of the ribbon cables with Sharpies, like 13, 12, 17, lovely jubbly. And then we go over to this one. This one over here, this nice long thin one, is all of the actual sound making apparatus. So in here, you might see these long black thin covered up uh, chips basically. What these are, are they're actually the sound chips. You'll notice there's nine of these things. Six of these are actually VCA and VCF sound chip parts and what they are is they're different for each voice because this has got six voices. I'll explain what happens with these voices in a sec, but these are for the different voices on the synthesizer. So basically this is actually six 
synthesizers in one, you might say. You press one key, it plays the first synthesizer. You press the key again, it plays the second synthesizer. You keep on pressing this and it runs through the six synthesizers. So that means if you hit six notes at the same time on the keyboard, you actually end up getting all of the six synthesizers playing at once. All of these six synthesizers are exactly the same and these are the different voices. So you're able to play a polyphonic synthesizer because it's basically six synths in one. How many times can you, can you say six and synths in a sentence? There's actually nine chips here and that's because three of these chips are actually the uh, waveform generating chips and then the other ones are actually the VCF and VCA ones and these ones tend to break. If you look carefully, you'll actually see that one of them is an imposter. Look at that one right there. So basically this one is a replacement because these chips tend to break and this one's obviously broken uh, voice number three has broken and you find that out if you end up hitting the keys you go like dan 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 that means voice three is broken so if you find you have a juno or any real poly synth from the 80s and you play like this da, da, and not every single key hits that means one of your voice chips has probably gone kaput so yeah watch out for that Okay, and here we have a quite nice, a lovely looking circuit. This one came straight out of the actual control panel. And what this is, is all the faders and the buttons. And if you can see here, all of the switches have actually got little colored plastic things over the top of them. I didn't realize it was actually made like this. It's pretty cool. It's very dusty, but I think the dust adds to the charm. I'm joking, I'm just being lazy and I can't be bothered to clean it. If you can see, look at all that dust. Ooh, ooh, ooh. So that is the control board. And it's all got loads of ribbon cables hanging out the back, which then goes to the CPU board. And then the CPU board's like, I'm gonna tell the voice board what to do. And this is basically all that the Juno is. Six mono synthesizers with a brain telling those synthesizers when to play. So I think the best thing to do now is put it back together. Are you ready to get going on Juno Build 2.0? Beautiful, time for the expression thing to go back on. Uh, just it, all it is is two screws at the top. So just pop those back on. Unlike the Lindrum and the MS-10, this is actually the first time I've ever taken apart a Juno 106. So I had no idea what to expect and um, I have no idea if I'm going to be able to put it back together. Let's see if there's any uh, problems along the way. Um. That's the thing actually, if anybody's got any suggestions of what they want to see reverse tear down, it doesn't need to be a musical instrument, it could be anything, then please comment below and you know, I'll have a think about it. And please don't say a human because I don't think I'll be able to put them back together. <laughs> okay, I think the next thing to do is take the actual front panel and put the circuit board back into here. So now I can put the hinge back in and all that just just. There's so many wires everywhere. I hope I haven't miswritten anything because plugging things in the wrong way is never good. So the Juno 106 was actually £799 when it came out. And that was in 1984. So I typed that into the, how much is that worth nowadays? And it's a ridiculously high amount of money. It was actually two and a half grand. Like, what can you buy for two and a half grand nowadays? After all, I'm the repairman. I'm just a dumbass with a screwdriver and an expensive synthesizer. So, <laughs> I shouldn't really be doing this because I have no idea whether it's gonna work. And if this doesn't work, then I've got a gig in a couple of days and I need it. So, I don't know what I'm gonna do. Maybe I'll have to use a computer. Yeah, that looks about good. I'm gonna leave all of the, um, what, what's that? Okay, there's a washer. Oh, well, like I said, there's gonna be uh, some screws and washers left over. Screwing in the hinges. Hey, baby. This is like doing Ikea flat pack. Get a sore wrist. Oh, too much Ikea flat packing for one day. So everything's back in to the actual machine. As you can see, it's all there. However, there is one thing that is looming over me right now, and that is the dreadful job of working out where all of these ribbon cables go. There's hundreds of them. Well, there's 25 to be precise. 
Luckily, I've written all the numbers, but I hope I can read my own writing because it's quite illegible at the best of times. Number 11. Ooh, ooh, Number 22. Three. Oh, nearly down to the final one, which is one single three pin Molex connector called number 18. And here we go. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's done. So now I'm going to just idiot check, double, double check that I've actually wired everything up because you don't want to plug this in and it goes smoky. Let me just see. Looking good. Right, let's play it. So let's plug it in and hope it doesn't blow up, shall we? Ooh. Can lead in. Audio. Mono. Boop. Oh. Oh, yeah. Oh. The cool thing is, is it has a delay time for the LFO to come in. So you hit it. And it starts going. Oh, I love it. Nice. So it's plugged in, it's working. Let's have a little bit of a jam and see what we can get on this beautiful machine. Ah, lovely. is you're able to select between these two polyphonic modes. <coughs> when you press poly one, all of the notes ring out. It doesn't stop, but when you press note number two, it means that some of the notes get stopped. So you don't have overhanging parts when you're playing a chord. So you go. dodgy because none of the actual voices are detuned and that's when the Kiwi mod comes in useful because you're able to make it detuned and sound fatter but right now it just sounds really strange. <laughs>
machine except for the ms10 this and the ms10 are all in it. anyway you can download all of these stems that i just played i played for a good 20 minutes all of it is available on my patreon so if you want to have it and like use it for bits and bobs then obviously be my guest go and have a look it's on the patreon like there's some riffs in there that you might find useful who knows but anyway there's also a live stream today on the patreon as well so if you want to go and see some live stuff i'm going to be performing all of this stuff go and check it out i think it's on at like 9 p.m greenwich mean time and yeah this has been the juno 106 teardown played for a couple of pedals including the big sky the deluxe electric mistress uh, this pretty funky Orion stereo delay and then this beautiful serotonin rat style distortion pretty awesome but yeah I hope you enjoyed this reverse teardown I've been moving on the computer don't forget to subscribe and don't be scared to try it mm. Ooh. Ooh. yeah